Hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to another fist pumping the exciting episode of Techspert Weekly and I know, I know, I promised there might not actually be an episode this week, sorry to disappoint you all, but then here we are, that's life, it's just one massive boot in the crotch basically, that's why we have alcohol. No worries though, this week's show will be a short one as we take a quick squint at the OnePlus 10T leaks and rumours ahead of next week's dandy old phone launch in beautiful New York City. New York City to Big Apple! Hey, I'm f***ing walking here, you c goblin f***ing sh** dude. That's how us New Yorkers talk! <clears throat> and we also check out the big new phone of the week, which ironically is also one of the smallest smartphones of 2022. But here's a big truth bomb for you, it's not actually the tiniest thing that I have stashed in my shorts at this precise moment. Nope, that particular award goes to this novelty cocktail umbrella, which I forgot was even in my pocket until just now when I sat down kind of awkwardly and it speared me right in the happy sack. Ruddy, ouch. Anyway, that's enough hot chat about the old coin purse, let's jingle this more for. Techspert Weekly! So this week has involved the usual teasing from OnePlus about its next big smartphone, the OnePlus 10T, which is set to launch globally at 3pm UK time on Wednesday, August the 3rd. And when I say teasing, what I of course mean is they've thrust open their trench coat and given us all a proper good eyeful of the goods. Absolutely nothing left to the imagination here. The OnePlus 10T will come in a couple of colour choices, the matte moonstone black or the glossy jade green version, both with an updated camera chassis that slopes and merges seamlessly into the arse end. Unfortunately, OnePlus's latest blog post, which covered the design of the phone in quite explicit detail, also started with a massive old kick to the knackers. I'm talking about their early admission that they've only gone and culled the alert slider, the iconic alert slider from the edge of the OnePlus 10T in order to make room for battery tech shenanigans and some Oppo style antenna efforts. And this wee confession has caused quite a stir in the OnePlus community and by caused quite a stir I mean it's gone down about as well as a mug of hot liquid sh**. And yeah, the cynic in me does kind of wonder if OnePlus is playing the long game here, they take away for the 10T and then they bring it back to great critical acclaim again in the OnePlus 11 series, hurrah hurrah, five stars all round. They've also revealed that the new dual cell battery will be bigger than 4,500 mAh, maybe not quite as big as the 5,000 mAh cells stuffed in the OnePlus 10 Pro however, and because of that dual cell design it will support ultra fast wired charging. The antenna system has also been updated to resemble the super strength setup of the Oppo Find X5 Pro. If you want to know more about all that clever antenna tech shenanigans, I have done a full in-depth look at that on the Oppo Find X5 Pro. It is an absolute doozy. If I do say so myself, go check it out, why don't you? And in its wee blog, OnePlus has also gushed about the camera tech on the OnePlus 10T, so what you can expect is the same Sony IMX766 camera sensor as found again on that Find X5 Pro, albeit without Oppo's Marisilicon X NPU Smarts. It's the same sensor that's been used on pretty much every bloody smartphone in 2022, including the Isuzu Zen 4 9, uh, all the way down to mid-rangers like the Realme 9 Pro Plus, the Nothing Phone, and I believe the OnePlus Nord 2T had it as well. So I have to wait and see, of course, for the full review to see if the camera chops are actually any good. And there have been various other leaks uh, this week as well on the OnePlus 10T, including the fact that it will unsurprisingly rock the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset. Got an HDR10 Plus already, 6.7 inch display apparently. But anyway, what little mystery remains will hopefully be revealed in Wednesday's massive OnePlus 10T launch event. So stay tuned for maybe a bit of sexy video action. Ha ha. As for launches, what done already happened, Asus finally unveiled its long-awaited Zen 4 9 just yesterday, bringing sweet relief to small-handed folk like myself. This 5.9-inch gem manages to vastly improve the craptastical battery life of last year's Zen Phone 8, while also finding room for Qualcomm's dick-swingingly, nipple-twistingly powerful Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, plus an almighty 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM. And I'm not going to run through all of the specs and the features and all of the other bollocks in the Zen 4 9 right here because I've already done that for you in my full in-depth unboxing and three days review video and I really don't like repeating myself. I say I really don't like repeating myself. But I will merrily re-emphasize just how impressed I am at this year's Mini Marvel which sorts out those battery wars and the overheating issues and packs an insane amount of tech into such a dinky frame. The Zen 4 9's few flaws, such as the lack of wireless charging, are very easy to overlook if you do prioritise your compact design and you still want a good bit of beef. 
Anyway, go check out that unboxing video if your pickle is well and truly tickled. And now it's time for the part of the show, which I don't even know why I bother with, frankly, because by this point, the audience retention is at about 10%. If that, I might as well just get a feather, bung it up my arse and do my best parrot impression for 10 minutes instead. But I don't actually have a feather to hand, so I guess let's do the, uh, the old viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> So first up, Gavin's Gadget, hello Gavin's Gadget, says, Chris, did you sleep this week? So many videos. Oh mate, that's, believe me, that's absolutely now. Like back in my prime, I could spaff out about 15 videos a day at one of those MWC type tech expo jobbies. And that's on a massively stinking hangover slash still half shit from the night before. My entire YouTube strategy is basically just carpet bombing the with endless content until I finally get booted out of the Circle Jerk Creators Club. They may not be the prettiest tech videos on YouTube, but by gum, there's a lot of them. Uh, Justin says, awesome t-shirt, where is it from? Uh, which t-shirt was I even wearing last week? Hang on, let me check. Ah, oh, the kill, uh, kill effort, yeah. Um, so that was a QWERTY special from well back in the day. Uh, we are talking the best part of a decade ago now, so not entirely sure it'll still be available, which is a shame because mine is absolutely just falling apart at the seams. Could really do with a new one, uh, but I have no shame, so f*** it. Uh, Starstruck says, ever since I started watching you, Condom Case and Budget Blower have implanted themselves in my tech vocabulary and I hate it. Keep up the good work. Cheers. Uh, Daniel says, got an interview lined up this week, so I popped this episode on to dust up on my vocab in preparation. Now I've just got to see if I can work in proper ball roaster or popper squint or perhaps spooge worthy. I can't fail to be offered the job. Well, I'm glad that uh, my shitty phrases are infiltrating the general population there. Uh, and yeah, I hope that the irrelevant British slang completely did the job and if you smashed the interview, Dan, definitely let us know how you get on, mate. Uh, Nox Scarlet says, Do you think that the Z Fold 4 is enough of an upgrade to switch from the Fold 3? Oh god no, I mean it'll be, a, it'll be a refinement at best, the design will be a little bit sleeker and sexier, you know, you'll have the latest processor chucked in there, stuff like that, but if you've got the full three, I'd imagine it's still running pretty bloody nicely, uh, so I wouldn't even worry about it. Uh, Chris says, the last two years I bought the fold and regretted it, will probably happen again. You're not short a few quid then, there. I hope you at least get a decent trade-in deal if you are going to stump up for the fold four. Uh, Flimmin Hedgehog says, I've never met anyone with a fold and fawn. Apparently Chris owns one, uh, but yeah, I know what you mean, mate. Uh, basically, the only people I've met in the real world, if you want to call it that, uh, who have a folding phone are other tech journalists who've got them straight off of Samsung. Which was particularly hilarious when they launched the first Galaxy Fold, because that thing was such a brick and so slippery as well that basically every tech launch you went to, we'd all sit down in our seats, and of course everyone who had a Galaxy Fold, it would just slowly slide out of their pockets, and then about five minutes into the event, you just hear thump, thump, crack, smash. There's all these Galaxy Folds went clattering to the ground. I think people kind of got wise to it and started putting them in their bags or in their, their jacket pockets or something after that. Uh, Frank says, Fold 4 versus iPhone 14, which is better? I mean, they haven't even launched yet. Maybe maybe give it a little, little while longer and then ask me that question, although they are very different phones. And as for the iPhone 14, well, I've dedicated more time lately to trimming my pubic hair into amusing shapes than I have reading up on the latest iPhone rumours. And in case you're curious, my best effort so far was Unbox Therapy's face. The resemblance was uncanny. The last I heard on the iPhone 14, the big news was no notch, finally, woo! Although apparently that's only on the Pro models, so if you aren't absolutely minted, you're still stuck with a shit phone. Good old Apple, don't ever change, and it sounds like you won't ever, to be fair. Uh, next up, Dan says, I personally call it Snapdragon 8 Gen 1.5. Yeah, I mean, that would make sense, right? Cheers, Dan. You're a classy Gen, sir. I agree wholeheartedly. You can stay, mate. Uh, SGSTU says, 2022, the year of the small incremental upgrade. Oh, and the Nothing Phone as well. Bring on 2023 already. Aye, it's, uh, it's not exactly been a classic so far, has it, for exciting mobile tech. I mean, when we all lose our collective shit over a few blinking lights, you can tell we're all a wee bit desperate. Uh, but yeah, hopefully 2023 will, uh, will bring something a bit more thrilling. We, uh, we can only hope. Uh, Oliver says, any news on when you'll be doing a review of the Pixel Buds Pro, please? I need some new buds as my current Sony ones last just over an hour. Oof, that's some, uh, some pretty dreadful battery degeneration right there. But Oliver, happy days, my friend. My Pixel Buds Pro video went live just yesterday, so go check that out. My full 
not really an in-depth review, it's an early days review, so I've only had them for a few days. Uh, but I've got to say, I do like them. The, uh, the audio quality, not quite as strong as some premium priced rivals because you don't have the full codec support. And the ANC, again, not quite as good as the best out there, like the Bowser's, but very, very, very good all the same. Battery life is fantastic. The design's really lovely. Touch controls are fantastic. Anyway, why am I spoiling the bloody review? Just go and watch that, yeah? Uh, Pre-N says, I still love the XZ Premium in that bright red colour they made. Now that is... Whoa. Yeah, hard agree, mate. Um, I re that was a really bright one as well, wasn't it? It was like super poppy. I do miss those sort of really punchy, vibrant experience from back in the day. Certainly, was it the Z5 Compact where they did it in that luminous yellow and like the bright pink and everything as well? I mean, it was kind of almost like Nokia Lumia design. Uh, Gerard says, with all these press trips you've been making, the most important question is, who's minding your cat? Well, there's some other people who hang about the place and they eat all my food and the little one's really noisy, but they do at least look after the cats when I bugger off out for a few days and occasionally scoop me up off the floor when I'm just lying there in a puddle of my own juices. Uh, next up, it's all great buddy Oil from Japan. You're right, sir. Hope all is well across the other side of the world. Uh, says, when you said the weirdest bar I've ever been to, I already knew it must be in Japan somewhere. As it's probably fair to say that a lot of the weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life did come from the one and a half weeks I've spent in Japan. That's probably why I love it there so much, because it's so utterly batshit bonkers. Definitely hoping to get back there again soon, that's for sure. Uh, XZ says, Uncle Spurt's winking haunts me to this day. I almost very badly misread that one. Elazar says, which will be a better phone, the Google Pixel 6a or the Asus Zenfone 9? Well, boy, howdy, do I have the video for you. Hopefully, should be going live in a couple of days or so if I actually ever bother getting around to editing the bugger. Gotta admit, it's kind of 50-50 right now. I may edit the video or I may just decide to concoct a new cocktail out of the contents of my bathroom cabinet. And if that's the case, I'll probably just wake up at some point in November. Again, really low on time now, so just a couple more comments. Uh, Reed says, I'm looking for a new phone around the 300 to 350 US dollar mark, primarily used for gaming. So far, I'm leaning towards the Xiaomi 11T. Uh, yeah, that's a decent choice. Otherwise, the Poco X4 GT also costs around that sort of mid-range point, and that has some good dedicated gaming features on there, good bit of performance and everything as well, so that would also do the job. And uh, Soul Cancelling says, I've had to listen to a Macam 118 times, kill me now. Uh, 119 times if you happen to be watching again this week. And I probably shouldn't be saying this, but you know, you don't actually have to watch this show week in, week out, or indeed at all ever. In fact, if you actually value your mental health and with a name like Soul Counseling, you probably do. I'd say just switch off right now and go away and play a nice bit of bird song, or maybe crochet yourself a nice light summery loincloth or something like that. What the f*** am I even talking about? No, 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 you should definitely 100% watch this show every single week. In fact, watch it twice and then tell all your friends about it incessantly on Facebook until they bloody watch it as well, because tech wankery, way! And before you all get your hopes up, yes, indeed, there will be a show next week, I promise, unless something catastrophic happens like my liver does finally give in. So, what's happening next week? This is about next week. Well, Wednesday, August the 3rd, as I already mentioned, OnePlus is launching the OnePlus 10T. Very little mystery involved, but there may be some video action here on TechSpert, so stay tuned for that. Plus some bonus hot surprises lurking just around the bend. And then, of course, do please join me noon Friday next week for another hot, sterling, sophisticated slice of TechSpert Weekly. In the meantime, have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend. If for some bizarre reason you haven't pogged subscribed and ding that notification bells already, then definitely please do that. And yeah, cheers, love you, bye.